down here at all left right you can actually see you can see the old snake road where this car is parked you can see it um, kind of corroded away here guys and moved the road back here about 10 years ago so when you come back in 10 years guys we'll be up there somewhere looking down at this road saying this is the old road stop out here now guys at a place called the Tree Sisters so any sisters on board guys this is a lovely place to take a photograph the Tree Mountain Rangers over here guys I'll show you as we get around a few of the mates does anybody hear of them the Laura Sorry Adam she's a famous singer in Ireland she is actually with the Cranberries anyone hear of her? Actually, her house over here, and she has a really recorded studio. I'll show you guys. It's out, it's out in a lonely green field on, on its own. See it up there on the hill, guys, straight in front of us on its own in the green field. The road is already open. Just up there on the field, look, guys. I was gonna, I was gonna, I um, think no, I'm after forgetting about the Blasket Islands, guys, but I don't know how, how this works, but when we get around this bend here now, guys, we're gonna be right beside the Blasket Islands, and you think we're after leaving them behind us, but they're actually still here in front of us. So I'll tell you a little story about them, guys, as, as we get a bit closer to them, about the island people, the people that used to live there. They were known as the island people. The wisdom of the government, of course, it was all down to money. They couldn't afford, they said, to keep sending a supply board out twice a week to the 60 people that actually were left on the island in the 50s. And uh, they, they, say, they decided that they had to get them off the island. They were told they had to evacuate the island. But there was a woman there, guys, on the island that by the name of Peg. They had no second name or anything, her name was Peg. And she came off the island, I think, when she was about 20. And she had two children, two boys. And they moved into the mainland. And I think she died something like seven years later. They, they, she just, they just couldn't cope with, with land, life on the mainland. But she had all stories to her, her son, her two sons, <coughs> along, along the way. She was, I suppose, as they were growing up. And um, she told them about life on, on the islands. And actually one of them, the grandson of, of, of her, actually wrote a book. He was actually a guard in Kerry. And he wrote a book about stories that she had told to her, his father. There is no way of outdoor left on the street in Ireland with the three houses, the four houses that actually still remain there. But the, the, the story she told, and it's written in one of, the, one of her books about the island people, is, it says that um, in, in uh, the 20s, but between the two wars, the men of the island had to row out themselves to get the supplies because the supply ship couldn't go because there was no men, there was no men to man the supply ship. So they had to row across themselves. They had no motorboat or anything. So in the, I think in the in the December of 1929, I think I got my right. on the 18th of December, three men left the island to get the supplies for Christmas. On the 18th of December, they headed away at their rowing boat and they got into the port down here guys and they decided they had, there was no shops you can imagine around here that time guys they headed to Dingle to get their supplies so they headed off to Dingle they actually borrowed a, a, a little donkey and a cart here off of one of the local farmers they headed off into Dingle and they came back with their supplies candles for the lights they had timber for the fire they had food for the for the Christmas and whatever presents I think pencils she mentioned pencils and I'm sure and coloring books for the kids for Christmas so they got all the supplies and they got back they got back to to the um, the Blasket Centre down here which is down here guys just down here to the left and Blasket Harbour is called so they got back here to go to head up the 21st to head back to the island and they got into their own boat to head back to the island and they actually tried for the next 21 days guys to get back to the island and they couldn't get back with the storm and the winds and the rain pushing the rowing board back they didn't get back over i think around the 13th or 14th of january 
Australia had no Christmas in 1929 on the islands. So she said it was tough life over there. The doctors, anyone, a doctor wouldn't stay there, nurse wouldn't stay there. There was no guards on the island. No one would actually live there. The life was so hard there. They had no doctor. They had a school, but the kids only went to school up until they were about nine or ten, which was in somebody's front room. It wasn't a, a proper school. It was just some woman at the island that tried to teach them a few basic things. There's some very, very good books, guys. You'll be able to have a look around Dingle and see them. About the island people over there. We're coming up here now, guys, to the Three Sisters. You'll see some stones here, guys, sticking up out of the ground. They're actually known as the, um, the fertility stones. Anybody wants to touch them, guys? This is where some of the, the rain started.